Lizanne and Saunders, it was a particularly rough January for stocks. The S&P was down 3%. And you know the old saying, as January goes, so goes the year. Should we apply that maximum to the market? Well, as January goes, so goes the year sometimes. Uh, you know, more than half the time, a weak January is followed by a relatively weak year. I think it's about 58% of years where January was down, the year is down. But that also means 42% of the time when January is down, the year is up. Uh, in fact, the, the up years tend to be some pretty good ones. And the last time we had a negative January was 2009, and we had a phenomenal year. So I would put it in the arsenal of interesting things to look at, but it's not gospel. But it's been an interesting year so far in the fact that we've seen a lot of volatility. The yep. VIX spiked over 20. It's now back around 15. Haven't seen the VIX that high since the government shut down in the fall. What should we make of that? Well, it hasn't been that high since then, but it, you know, it's nowhere near the high 40s to 50 range that it was in 2011. So this spike was just a really mini spike. Interestingly, options traders now have a record number of, uh, of, of puts on the VIX, suggesting that they think the VIX is going to continue to go down. And history suggests that they're usually right. So I think this mini spike in volatility is probably over for now. I do think we're going to have more bouts of it this year, but I think we may be in a a short-term moment of calm for the market. The other interesting thing about this month and a half we've had so far um, is the fact that there's been a lot of bad economic news in the U.S. You've had some bad employment reports, some bad durable goods numbers, bad numbers from retailers. Is the U.S. strong enough to offset the real weakness we keep hearing about overseas? I do think it is. Even the most recent jobs number under the surface, actually, the number was fairly positive with the gains in household employment, the decline in the unemployment rate in the face of a rise in labor force participation. So I actually think the underlying numbers were better. It looks like most of the negative numbers um, had a very heavy weather component to them. Um, the problem is, of course, with the storms that we're still facing this week in the Northeast, we're not getting out of that cycle anytime soon. So we won't know for a little while how much weather had an impact, but I think it had a pretty significant impact. And I do think once we pull out of the winter season, I think the economy looks pretty decent. And then finally, we saw Janet Yellen testify on Capitol Hill today. Does, her ha does having her in charge, as opposed to Ben Bernanke, does that change what you do at all on a day-to-day -day basis? Not at all. In fact, I think if, if tapering had not begun before Yellen took over from Bernanke, there might be more unanswered questions. But the fact that it started, she's been both a player and a coach. So in, in the development of this game plan, I, I really don't think, barring anything coming out of the blue, that the path that the Fed is on, at least in the next year or so, is going to be any different under Yellen than it would have been under Bernanke. All right. Thanks a lot, Lizanne. Thanks, Greg. Always fun. Thank you for watching The Street.